Another person who has not studied the Dharma or attended Sutra lectures hears that the Buddha was the foremost and unsurpassed person in the world, and so he wishes to become a Buddha right on the spot. Is this not stupid? Another wants to start a business without capital. How can you start a business without capital? There is yet another person who is extremely funny. He does not buy a horse racing ticket and expects to win the future race. This is totally unreasonable, impossible, and stupid. There is a saying that illustrates the depths to which stupidity can go. Day in and day out, may my beautiful flowers stay fresh. And night after night, why can't the shining moon be full? I wish that all the springs on earth will flow with sparkling wine, and in the forest, all the trees will sway with gold. Someone who likes flowers wants them to be always fresh and beautiful. So he says, "May my beautiful flowers stay fresh." Now is this not a false thought? A person described in this poem thinks that the full moon is very finest and wishes that he would never win. And those who like to drink think, "I wish that all the springs on earth." Will flow with sparkling wine. They wish that every body of water would become wine, so that whenever they want to take a drink, it would be very convenient. Although they feel this is the best, it too is impossible. Those who are greedy for wealth wish that all the trees in the forests will sway with money, so that when they need money, all they have to do is pick it off a tree. This would be the best for them, but it too is impossible and does not exist. Day in and day out, may my beautiful flowers stay fresh. This is the thought of those who wish that objects of beauty will never change. They want money and wine everywhere and a full moon every night. The full moon represents anger. So in this short poem, we find wine, wealth, sex, and anger. How does the full moon refer to anger? Such a person wants the full moon, the moon to remain full, but it cannot be full every night, and so this person becomes dissatisfied, and dissatisfaction is just anger. So this poem discusses the sub subjects of wine, wealth, sex, anger, and of course stupidity. If people were not stupid. They would not give rise to desire and all the other different kinds of afflictions which follow it. This has been a brief, descriptive explanation of the karma of the mind. Our mouths create many karmic obstructions and offenses, which are in general grouped together under four kinds of evil speech. Irresponsible speech refers to discussions about improper things. For example, men like to talk about women, and women like to talk about men. Speech like this is useless and unprincipled. It is basically depraved. False speech refers to lying. There are big lies, medium-sized lies, and small lies. If you have killed someone and are interrogated about it, a great lie would be to say, "No, it wasn't me. I didn't do it." The same is true if you are questioned about stealing or sexual misconduct. Covering up your misdeed is lying. Harsh speech is very cruel, vicious, and cutting. Something which people do not like to hear. Duplicity is spoken by one who is two-faced. These are all descriptions of comic obstructions, the evil karma done by our actions. Words and thoughts, and if you have these faults, then you, your three karmas are not pure. When we bow to the Buddhas, our body, speech, and mind karma should be pure. I constantly worship and respect them. Constantly means to always cultivate pure karma of body, mouth, and mind to worship all Buddhas, also to kill, steal, and commit sexual misconduct. And then bow to the Buddha is not pure. If you truly wish to have a change of heart, 
bowing is much better than not bowing to the Buddhas at all. Nonetheless, it cannot be considered worshipping the Buddhas with pure body, mouth and mind. To worship and respect all Buddhas is to be pure in one's three karmas. When your three karmas are pure, you constantly worship and respect them. Sutra, in each and every place where there are Buddhas, I manifest bodies as numerous as fine most of dust in ineffable the ineffable numbers of Buddha lands. Commentary, he constantly worships and respects all Buddhas in each and every place where there are Buddhas. Buddhas are incalculable and measureless in number, and when we bow to them, our minds are also manifest measureless and incalculable numbers of our own bodies, as numerous as find most of dust in ineffable the ineffable numbers of Buddha lands before all of the Buddhas. The Buddha drama reveals inconceivable states. If you resolve your mind to pervasively worship all Buddhas throughout the Dharma realm, your merit will pervade throughout the Dharma realm too. After the youth, youth wealth first took Major Sri Bodhisattva as his teacher, the Bodhisattva told him to go to the south and bow to 53 wise teachers. Among these was Maitreya Bodhisattva. When he arrived at the abode of Maitreya, he saw towers adorned with the seven precious jewels piled continuously one upon another. In each of the towers were other towers, and in each of these towers were there were even more towers. It was impossible to calculate how many there were. In each tower there was Maitreya speaking drama and what is more, the youth good wealth saw his own body bowing before each transformation body of Maitreya Bodhisattva. He saw layer upon layer of them without end, calculable in number. In calculable in number. Now as the flower of Dharma Sutra is being explained, we should cultivate this contemplation, which is called the contemplation of the Dharma realm. For example, when you bow to the wonderful Dharma Lotus Flower Sutra, you should even though your body even your body is here in the lecture hall, contemplate your body as appearing before Buddhas as many as the dust moves throughout the ten directions, in such a way that you bow to the Dharma Flower Sutra before each of those Buddhas. You should give rise to a limitless mind because everything is made from the mind alone, if the limits of your mind totally pervade throughout the Dharma realm, and you bow before an infinite number of Buddhas, then that number of Buddhas will accept your worship. Sutra, each and every body everywhere worships and respects Buddhas as many as the fine most of dust in ineffably ineffable numbers of Buddha lands. Commentary, although you have not become a Buddha, when you contemplate like this, you can manifest a body before each and every Buddha. This is to pervasively worship. Sutra, when the realm of empty space is exhausted, my worship and respect will be exhausted. But because the realm of empty space is inexhaustible, my worship and respect will never end. In the same way, when the realms of living beings, the karma of living beings, and the afflictions of living beings are exhausted, my worship and respect will be exhausted. But the realms of living beings, the karma of living beings, and the afflictions of living beings are inexhaustible. Therefore, my worship and respect are inexhaustible. They continue in thought after thought without case, without ease. My body, mouth, and mind never tire of doing these deeds. Commentary When the realm of empty space is exhausted, my worship and respect will be exhausted. Empty means unreal, and space means non existent. The text talks about a time that the realm of empty space comes to an end, but at what time does empty space exist? You cannot know this. Is there a time when it comes to an end? No, empty space has no beginning or end. When did empty space begin? Never. 
when will empty space end? Never. And so the Bodhisattva said that when the realm of empty space is no more, my worship and respect of all Buddhas of the ten directions will come to an end. But because the realm of empty space is inexhaustible, my worship and respect will never end. At all times, I worship and respect all Buddhas, and my worship and respect is endless and inexhaustible, continuing until the end of the limits of the future. In the same way, when the realms of living beings are exhausted, and there are no living beings, when the karma of living beings is exhausted, and there is no more karma of living beings, and when the afflictions of living beings are exhausted, and living beings have no more afflictions, then my worship and respect will be exhausted. But the realms of living beings and the karma of living beings and the afflictions of living beings are inexhaustible since they never end. My worship will never end. The afflictions of living beings are produced from ignorance and the karma of living beings is created because of afflictions and so living beings are born through the power of their karma. But since the realms, the karma, and the afflictions of living beings can never be cut off, ended, or exhausted, therefore my worship and respect of all Buddhas is inexhaustible. They continue in thought after thought without cease. That when I worship and respect all Buddhas, I do this with very sincere and earnest thoughts, in thought after thought without cease. Each thought is connected to the next, so that in thought after thought, without end, I worship the Buddhas continuously without interruption. My body, mouth, and mind never tire of doing these deeds. In my actions, words, and thoughts, I never grow tired of worshipping and respecting all Buddhas purely without cease. Sutra. Moreover, good men, to praise the thirst come once is explained like this. In each fine mold of dust in all lands throughout the ten directions and the three builders of time, exhausting the Dharma realm and empty space, there are Buddhas as numerous as fine mold of dust in all worlds. Each of these Buddhas is circumambulated by an ocean-wide assembly of Bodhisattvas. Without my profound, with my profound and supreme understanding, I know and see them all. Each of my bodies brings forth the tongue of subtle and wonderful eloquence, surpassing the skillful speech of even Sarasvati, the goddess of eloquence. Each tongue brings forth an inexhaustible sea of sounds. Each sound emits an ocean of all worlds. Praising and glorifying all the thirst come one see of all merit and virtue. These praises continue without cease to the end of the boundaries of the future, exhausting the drama realm. These sounds reach everywhere. When the realm of empty space is exhausted, when the realms of living beings are exhausted, when the karma of living beings is exhausted, and when the, the affliction of living beings are exhausted, only then will my praise be exhausted. But just as the realm of empty space up to and including living beings' afflictions are endless, so too are my praises endless. They continue in thought after thought without cease. My body, mouth, and mind never tire of doing these deeds. Commentary. Moreover, good men, universal worthy Bodhisattva called the youth good man, because he has taken the five precepts, cultivates the ten wholesome acts, and cultivates the subtle practices of the Bodhisattva. Although the youth good wealth appears in the body of a youth, in actuality, he is a great Bodhisattva, and so universal worthy Bodhisattva said, Good man, to praise the thirst come once is explained like this. What is the meaning of this vow to praise the thirst come once? Now I will tell you. In each fine mold of dust in all lands throughout the ten directions and the three builders of time, exhausting the Dharma realm and empty space, exhausting the Dharma realm, 
the Dharmarium includes the Dharmarium of Buddhas and the Dharmarium of Bodhisattva, South Heroes, those enlightened conditions, gods, humans, as well as animals, hungry ghosts, and hell beings. These ten together are called the ten Dharmariums, and these ten Dharmariums are not beyond a single thought. One thought contains the ten Dharmariums and the ten Dharma realms contain all the measureless Dharma realms. In all lands, lands refers to all Buddha lands in each of the fine most of dust in all worlds. There are Buddhas as numerous as fine most of dust in all worlds. Each of these Buddhas is circumambulated by an ocean wide assembly with immeasurable, limitless, and boundless numbers of great bodhisattvas. Ocean represents a multitude showing that the number of bodhisattvas is extremely, extremely many, like the waters of the great ocean. All of the bodhisattvas respectfully circumambulated these Buddhas with my profound and supreme understanding. I know and see them all. Universal with the Bodhisattva says, I use the most profound and supreme understanding obtained from cultivation of the way to know and see all of the countless Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. I should both know and see them. Knowledge is wisdom and vision is perceiving the nature of things. Each of my bodies brings forth the tongue of subtle and wonderful eloquence. My eloquence surpasses the eloquence of all people, surpassing the skillful speech of even Sarasvati, the goddess of eloquence. This goddess is the most super, superb speaker and can make the most subtle distinctions. Nevertheless, my powers of discrimination far surpass those of this goddess. Universal worthy bodhisattvas, an obstructed eloquence surpasses the skillful speech of even the goddess of the heaven of eloquence. It is even beyond the eloquence of the gods. There are four kinds of unobstructed eloquence. The first is the unobstructed eloquence of phrasing. This means that once the words flow forth smoothly without impediment and that one is skilled in debating. The second is the unobstructed eloquence of dramas. From one drama, immeasurable dramas are produced, and the Im immeasurable dramas return to the one drama. This saying characterizes the speech of one who has the unobstructed eloquence of drama. The third is the unobstructed eloquence of meaning. One who has this kind of unobstructed eloquence can within one meaning explain immeasurable meanings, and then return these immeasurable meanings to the one meaning. The fourth kind of unobstructed eloquence is delight in speaking. Delight in speaking means that one never tires of speaking the Buddha Dharma. The tongue of subtle and wonderful eloquence refers to a person who is a most capable speaker. Whatever he says, everyone believes and they enjoy hearing him. If your tongue is not skilled, when you speak, no one will believe you and no one will want to listen to you. Each tongue brings forth an inexhaustible ocean of sounds, these subtle and wonderful tongues let fall an immeasurable, boundless, and inexhaustible sea of subtle and wonderful sounds. Each sound praises the first come one, and each sound emits an ocean of all worlds, which means that there is profusion of speech which is nonetheless delightful to hear. All of these sounds and words together are praising and revering to all thus come ones throughout the ten directions and the three periods of time, praising and glorifying all the thus come ones sea of all merit and virtue. They praise and revere the Buddhas with their sea of all merit and virtue. Their praises continue without cease to the end of the boundaries of the future. He continues and never ceases. In his praise of the thus come ones, exhausting the Dharma realm, these sounds reach everywhere. There is no place in the Dharma realm where this sound does not totally pervade, and so 
In every place in the Domarium a sound praises the first command. When the realm of empty space is exhausted, he praises the first command by saying that when the realm of empty space is exhausted, when the realms of living beings are exhausted, when the calm of living beings is exhausted, and when the afflictions, afflictions of living beings are exhausted, only then will my praise be exhausted. One then will my praise come to an end. But just as the realm of empty space up to and including living beings' afflictions are endless, so too are my praises endless. The realms of living beings cannot be exhausted, nor can the realm of empty space, the drama realm, the karma of living beings, or the afflictions of living beings. None of these can be exhausted, and so the sounds of his praises will never cease. There is no time when his praises will cease. But they will continue on in thought after thought without cease. His faculties of body, mouth, and mind never tire of doing these deeds. I always praise the first come ones and never give rise to even a thought of being tired. How much the less become worn out.